What's up everybody and welcome back to the Cool Fears channel and welcome to episode 3 of the Cool Fears Toy News Toy Talk podcast where we have some toy news to talk about and once again we will be joined by a special co-guest host later on in this episode but first we're going to get over into the toy haul of this week as well as the toy news but first if you're new then welcome this channel is all about cool action figures analyzing them, hunting them, taking pics of them and of course playing with them. I upload new videos constantly throughout the week so make sure you hit that bell icon so you stay notified when I do upload new videos and if you haven't already go ahead and hit that subscribe button guys it is a very small goal of mine. I reach at least one new subscriber per new video that I put out. So please be my one new subscriber for this video. Thank you so much in advance. And if you do enjoy this video or any of my other ones, please remember to give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel grow and it lets me know you guys are enjoying the content that I put out. And if you guys want to support the channel in any way, all I ask is that you watch my videos from start to finish. The information on the channel is intended for adult collectors and not children. I'm your host, Jesse the Bat Magical, aka the Buff Collector. And before we get into it, guys, I just wanted to say thank you to our very new sponsor, V Rare Store check them out they are a small business so i highly recommend them for all your anime funko pop and pokemon card needs they do also have a few mesco uh in stock and whatnot so go ahead and check them out and you can use code cool figures at checkout for a 10 percent discount everything will be in the description below uh v rare store check them out i highly recommend them uh so with that being said guys we have some toy news, not too much this week, but some pretty fun toy news to go over. And of course, we have this week's toy haul, which I am super excited uh, to talk about. And then later on in the episode, we are going to be joined once again, like I said, by a super special uh, guest co-host. And we are going to be talking some Suicide Squad, as I will be going to see that later tonight. So before we get into all that, like I said, we are going to go ahead and get started with the toy haul. So what did we get this week? So we found some stuff in stores. We got some stuff in the mail. We went toy hunting looking essentially for the new McFarlane Bat Cycle and 1966 Batmobile. Uh, and in that hunt, we went ahead and actually acquired these new World of Halo figures. Now, I, like I said, I had no intentions of jumping into this line, but those clearance prices got me in. And when I reviewed them, I was very thoroughly uh, impressed and surprised at the quality of them and how they looked and how great they are as action figures. And uh, so I'm not going to collect anything and everything from that line mainly the stuff that i'm connected to in terms of the halo universe like i said i grew up from halo 1 to halo 4 basically uh more halo 3 uh not so much 4 but it was around the time when i was growing up uh so i'm more attached to those games and whatnot so uh definitely the mongoose was something i wanted to pick up but uh on ebay it was going for about 50 bucks and uh you could order something on gamestop but it was kind of like a gamble. They'd either send you the ghost or the mongoose, so you didn't know what you were going to get. And so I kind of gave up hope on owning this. And uh, when I went to that Target looking for those McFarlane stuff, uh, I actually came across this three-pack and this mongoose. I actually first found the new gun goose uh, there, and I was like, ooh, this is actually a good alternative if I cannot find one, uh, a regular mongoose. And lo and behold, as I'm looking through the boxes and everything, there was one mongoose, and I knew for a fact that I was definitely taking that home with me. And then I came across this three-pack. Now, I definitely didn't want all three figures. I definitely just wanted the uh, Translucent Master Chief. And uh, But the thing is, the, rec the old three-pack from Wave 1 never went on clearance, so I don't expect these guys to go on clearance either, especially with these guys being bigger figures. Uh, so so I went ahead and just pulled the trigger since I do want this Master Chief. He looks really cool. So in Target, we went ahead and picked up this Mongoose. The Mongoose only comes with Chief and the Rocket Launcher. I added the Marine and the uh, Assault Rifle from the Chief that I got from the Warthog since he's sitting in the Warthog. Uh, he doesn't need the rifle, so I went ahead and put that on his back. And uh, I took one of the UNSC Marines that I got in my two packs and I put them on here and gave him the rocket launcher and then in terms of these guys uh like i said i mainly just wanted the chief he's really cool um i just i don't know what it was when i saw him in stores i was just like i really want this chief it reminds me of like i don't know if he has if it's his cloaking ability or if it's supposed to be like a hologram but i really dig translucent figures i i have um a translucent or a hologram uh, Commander Cody and Darth Maul from the old original 3.75 inch series from back when i was a kid um so i actually have uh, Darth Maul one sealed in box go ahead and check out episode 2 linked up above here where, where we talked some toy news uh, the toy haul of that week as well as some snake eyes and of course we open or we, not, we don't open but we go through a bin of unopened uh, Star Wars toys from my childhood which I do have a holographic Darth Maul still sealed uh, but anyways uh, yeah I just absolutely love this figure so I, I wanted it so I 
went ahead and bought the three pack and then in the mail i did pre-order this diamond select bruce lee now this guy is super cool i have so many great ideas uh in terms of toy photography that i want to do with him in fact this week's uh friday toy photography was gonna be centered around him until i got this mezco joker in so before we get into that let me talk a little bit more about this bruce lee uh, i did not know that diamond select was making these figures and when i found out uh, i was super excited and thankfully they had him on amazon and he was actually on sale for like 26 dollars uh where the yellow suit one was 30 so i went ahead and went with this guy and in all honesty i kind of wanted this one because growing up uh as my name says i am the buff collector and i am a uh, bodybuilder but when i started my fitness journey i was mainly doing a lot of calisthenics and that's what bruce lee did so i was watching always a bunch of like bruce lee calisthenics videos watching what he did um you know my friend back in high school had a pull up bar in his backyard so we just be doing dips and pull-ups and muscle-ups all day long push-ups um and there's a point where my chest actually looked like this when i was getting ready for a competition when i first started competing um if i remember while i'm editing i'll put it right here i'll put a pic of me right here but uh i absolutely love this figure bruce lee is just such a legend and i have so many ideas of uh figures to photograph him with of him kicking their ass and whatnot so it's going to be so much fun probably going to be a lot of them are probably going to be done uh or most or a handful of them are going to be done next friday for next friday's toy photography shoot um because this week this week's toy photography was definitely uh centered around this man right here the Gotham by Gaslight Mezco exclusive from their Mezcon Joker. This thing is so cool. The second I saw him reveal this, I knew I had to have it because the second I saw it, it re instantly reminded me of the Joker's first few appearances in the comic books and uh, the character he was actually based off of in the like the 1930s or 20s or something like that. And uh, Mezco even came out with a post today on Friday saying that this Joker was. Uh, influence inspired and kind of portrayed after that first appearance joker which is really cool to have uh and to add to that they made him kind of like the jack the ripper type so it was really cool and unique and i absolutely loved it and uh i was already in the in the market to buy a mezco joker i'll be honest i was really looking at that um the most recent one the the Prince of Crime edition uh, and I was about to pull the trigger when they said this was up for pre-order uh, or actually order since it was instantly shipped out basically mine got shipped out a few days later um, I was seeing people get it like literally the next day and I was just like well where's mine but thankfully it came in and this guy stole the show I have so many pics if you want to check out this Friday's toy photography video I will link that up above here where it's him just going crazy and he couldn't have come at a more perfect time because halloween is right around the corner so i definitely will be using him for more shoots uh so i absolutely love mezco toys guys uh and i've been wanting to buy a new mezco for a while recently uh, i just like i said i just love mezcos they're just so amazing um you know sideshow and hot toys are so detailed and amazing but they're so big you know to me they're more poseable statues because unless you have the ability to create dioramas around that scale um, it's not really feasible to go out and buy them and whatnot so for me i absolutely love mezcos because in the one six scale or the one twelve scale uh you know they they fit all the dioramas i have and whatnot and they have that detail basically a hot toy uh just in a way smaller form i'm not shunning hot toys at all because there's definitely a, like i've said in many episodes before uh I, there are many hot toys that i would love to have and own but uh one is not uh financially feasible for me or spatially feasible for me as you can see i might this is just one corner of my room the rest is just as packed uh so i have absolutely no room for a figure that stands a foot as much as i would love to own some um so that's why i love mezco because they bring that intricate detail and not only in the figure but the accessories as well i mean look at this it has a briefcase and it has like literally foam inserts in there where everything has its space his spot he comes with so many soft good things this is only a fraction of what he comes with he still has a few things in here a bunch of unique hands that you do not see with just every figure that you usually get you know like an open hand fisted hand you know all these he has very unique hands like especially like these ones where he's like you know showing off the briefcase and whatnot they're very jokery hands and stuff not and whatnot so super excited to keep filming or for, uh taking pics of him and messing around with him super excited to add him to my collection and happy to have a joker uh in mezco form especially since i have so many batman in mezco form already so in basically in terms of uh reviews this will be out on monday this will be out on tuesday wednesday and thursday because originally my 
the days I posted were Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Mondays and Wednesdays were being uh, toy reviews, and then Fridays were still my toy photography videos. So I try to keep Mondays and Wednesday, Wednesdays as like the days that I post the figures I'm more ex most excited about. And I'm definitely m most excited about these two right here this week. Uh, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So look out for those reviews reviews coming later this week. Uh, so we're, we will go more in depth. Uh, like this guy, he comes with a whole host of accessories and a really cool ones uh, and a bunch of hands and whatnot. So uh, really excited to share with you guys. So with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and move on to toy news because there's not too much this week, but there is some really exciting one. Starting with, of course, Hasbro Surprise. Not even announcements or reveals, but just drops and orders for the new Power Rangers and TMNT uh, crossover figures and I'm sure you can see them now on my desk but um, I I definitely had to get into this line because well I read the comics as you can see here this one is actually my prized possession it is the the Eastman covered uh, or cover uh, where he drew both the Power Rangers and the Ninja Turtles in his style and Honestly, I'll, I'm going to be honest with you guys. This was right when I got back into comics, a little after I got back into comics. Uh, and so I didn't even realize that it was the Eastman variant cover until recently. And I'm super happy that I just happened to pick this one up. This one just looked the coolest. Um, so thankfully, I have this one. I basically have the variant cover for most of them except for the third one. Here's the second one right here. And then the third one. This one has to be my third favorite, and you'll see why uh, my third soon. But this one's cool because you know you have the Ninja Turtles, and then you have the Power Rangers all in the sh in the reflection of the sword. That's really cool in my opinion. And uh, this one has to be my second favorite next to Eastman cover because I mean it's Mike eating a pizza, and the Power Rangers are looking down on the Ninja Turtles through a manhole. I mean that's just so that's just perfect in my mind. So I definitely had to jump into that line. Um, so they did release Donnie and Leo as a two pack Leo, of course, the blue ranger, Donnie, the black ranger, since there is no purple ranger in the mighty Morphin line. Um, I'm sure, I think a few do have purple rangers. I can't remember. None of the ones that I follow or grew up with have purple rangers, if I can remember correctly. Uh, so Donnie is the black ranger and Leo is the blue, uh, Mikey and April are also a two pack and they are Mikey's the yellow and April is the pink. Uh, Raph and Tommy came out. Tommy Oliver from the Power Rangers uh, came out together. Raph is, of course, the Red Ranger, and Tommy is a foot ninja per the storyline where he is actually undercover. Spoilers alert. Sorry. Uh, but it, I didn't really spoil much because it's found out pretty early on that he's undercover, uh, you know, trying to do something for himself rather than just work for the foot um and last but not least they of course had to give us a morphed shredder and he of course is the green ranger so i of course had to get all of these i really hope we get the power rangers in their ninja uniforms that'd be really cool as well although i really hope they wait about a year to do that because all the two packs will run you about $52 a piece. The Shredder himself will run you about $32. Um, and I highly recommend, I am not associated with Big Bad Toys Store. Once again, I am associated with v Bear Store, but they do not carry these. Um, but the more you shop at them, the more they can expand and grow and carry more stuff that you collect and other people collect as well. So shop v Bear Store. But for the time being, I highly suggest Big Bad Toy Store for these figures because it is $4 flat rate shipping on Hasbro Pulse. I think one of these packs came out to about $87 for me. And then same thing with Entertainment Earth. It was about $87 uh, with shipping and everything, and it was just ridiculous. And then I realized that they're coming out on Big Bag Toy Store for $4 flat rate shipping. So I went ahead and ordered all the packs at once from Big Bad Toy Store and, you know, did the $4 flat rate shipping instead of the Expedient and went ahead and canceled my pre-orders from Hasbro, canceled my pre-orders from Entertainment Earth because... That was just ridiculous. Eighty-seven dollars. It's base. You know, the amount I paid was almost the eighty-seven dollars was almost like about a quarter or more of what I paid for all four things or all three three packs or two packs. I'm sorry, uh, from Big Bad Toy Store with shipping and everything. So I highly recommend if you're going to be picking these up, go check out Big Bad Toy Store. Their shipping rates four dollars flat rate. Like I said, I have no association with them, uh, but. That was just the best deal that I found, and I want to share that with you guys. So moving on from that, uh, they did release new 
pics of the Jurassic Park Amber Collection Muldoon figure. I will post them right here so you guys can check them out. Um, and of course, as with most figures that are coming out nowadays, he does not come with his shotgun. Nope. Rather, he comes with his taser gun. And we saw how effective those were at the beginning of the film, didn't we, guys? When, like, what was it, like 10, maybe 20 guys were using him against one raptor or T-Rex, and he still ended up eating somebody. So, very effective uh, weapon, but, uh, you know, no guns because, you know, kids see guns with toys, and it's a bad thing, apparently, now. So, no guns with Modune. You won't get his shotgun, but you will get his taser gun, I guess. Uh, that's why I find it very hard to get into this Amber Collection. Not just that, to be honest, but uh, this figure does actually look pretty decent. But um, I don't, I don't know. I just, I, I, just, I don't feel the need to have a six-inch version of uh, Jurassic Park figures. Um, I do like the Legacy Collection because you could do a lot more. You know, like they do have the Jeep and then the Ford, uh, which I recently did a review on, which I will link up above here. Um, and so I feel like you could do a lot more with that. And my Jurassic Park Collection is more of like display purposes. I don't really photograph it. I don't. I my original Jurassic Park display was meant to be more of a, like a museum type thing. I have a Jurassic Park. Um, uh, T-Rex bus, which is kind of like a smaller one. I have a T uh, Raptor hook or claw, and then also like the little amber thing, uh, the amber, the mosquito in the amber. And I had it all set up and looked like very, you know, presentable and very much like a museum and whatnot. And uh, so that's what I initially wanted my Jurassic Park collection to look like. And then I bought a Raptor, and then I bought the uh, Saddler and uh, Hammond pack and it just expanded from there but now that i bought that t-rex and jurassic park ford explorer uh i just have almost no space on that shelf anymore that t-rex is just huge and uh the even the ford is a pretty big vehicle so i have absolutely no space on my jurassic park shelf anymore so i don't think i'm going to be picking up any of the amber collection six inch figures unless i can find them on clearance for very cheap and then i'll I'll figure a way to fit them in. Uh, but that's just me. Are you guys excited for Moldoon to come out? Let me know in the comments down below. Moving on to some NECA news. They did release new images for the final or the final packaging images for their black and white uh, Frankenstein figure, which I will post right here. I don't know if I'm going to get it. If I see it in stores, I might get it because I already have the colored version right here. So literally right behind me. So I'm pretty happy with this one. Like I don't think I need a black and white version of Frankenstein, uh, especially considering that if I want to collect at least one of each of the Universal monsters, um, I can't really buy doubles because my shelf is kind of small where I'm going to be putting them. So I don't think I'm going to be getting it. Although, like I said, if I find them in stores and it looks good enough, I just might. I don't know. Um, you know, maybe put them in a different position and use this chain for something else in toy photography and whatnot. And, uh, you know, use the other chain. I don't know. Uh, it's sounding more. I'm talking myself more into it as I, as I talk and speak. So I'm going to go ahead and put this guy back and say I'm going to pass on it. But uh, like I said, if I see it in stores, I'm going to most likely walk around with it and it'll be a registered decision uh so with that being said oh the shredder the the NECACon european style shredder super shredder and casey jones have now been found in walmart stores i will show a pic right here so if you're looking for those happy hunting good luck and uh get them before the scalpers guys let's 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 get them before the scalpers because fuck the scalpers um, talking about McFarland, they did open their new McFarland store where you could buy a bunch of stuff from their, uh, you know, catalog and whatnot. And they did unveil that big mega figure Bane that they were teasing and whatnot. I will show it here. It is just a box set of the four or five build build of figures. Let me see. You got Wonder Woman, Omega, Scarecrow, Batman. So it's the four figures, and then you get the the Bane already built for you and whatnot. I guess he figured, you know, there was. People were having difficulty putting it together. Let me just put it together for them. But I'm kind of happy that that's what it came out to be because it's an easy pass for me. And like the Mad Hatter review says, easy passes are great because it saves the wallet. It doesn't hurt the wallet. Uh, and you know what? It, it helps people that need it and that want it. But if you already have it or if you don't need it, you don't, you don't know. Like I said, it doesn't hurt the wallet. So that's another great thing about easy passes. So with that being said, that's basically it for McFarland this week. Surprisingly, they usually have a lot. But hot toys like i said i don't own any i wish i did i just can't feasibly 
uh, financially, space wise. I just, but they did uh, announce some really cool hot toys this week that I re- do want to talk about. And I want to shout out old school or uh, old Republic collectibles. I believe that I'll try to remember what their name is and put it here if I can remember. Uh, they posted a story and they're like, Hot Toys should make a final Mandalorian episode, Luke Skywalker with Grogu and a crushed uh, Dark Trooper. And sure enough, a few days later, what did Hot Toys announce? Exactly that. A, f- a final episode Mandalorian, Luke Skywalker with the Grogu and a crushed Dark Trooper. So that's really cool. I really wish I could own that. That looks amazing. Although the one Hot Toy that I'm really contemplating putting a down payment on is the Mandalorian with all the armor and supplies when uh, he crashes his speeder bike in ep- in Season 2. And he has, like, you know, the Boa Fett armor and whatnot. He's carrying it. I really like that just for all the extra pieces it comes with. A lot also, as well as the Mandalorian, you know, and Grogu. Um, and also that black suit superman and nightmare batman those those may be the first hot toy figures i may put a deposit on if i can but uh they did also announce an animated clone war style anakin and obi-wan which is really cool though they look amazing they look straight out of the cartoon so another two that i would really come you know there's a lot of things i would like i said i want from hot toys and whatnot but I just can't afford it, unfortunately. But if you can, are you guys excited for these releases? If you are, let me know. If you're going to be getting them, let me know. I mean, I'd be really excited to talk to you guys about that because, like I said, these things look amazing. So moving on to Black Series, we'll stick with the Star Wars theme. Yak Face recently posted that there is a new Mandalorian build-up pack in the works. Not much information is known on it yet, uh, but just know there is another Mandalorian build-up pack in the works. The last one being the uh, Din Djarin and Child pack, where you got the few pieces of Beskar, the tracking beacon, and the child, the prim, and I believe the cauldron that he puts the Beskar pieces in, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm really hoping that this build-up pack doesn't include the Mandalorian because I have about four of him. I have season one episode one to two you know his the original armor that he wears i have best arm mando i have credit collection mando and then i also have the carbonized mando so that's four mandos so even when target put it back up for pre-order during their geek summer celebration thing i couldn't find myself putting it in order for it because i had so many mandos i was just like what's the point of adding another Mandalorian just for those accessory pieces. So I went ahead. So I'm really hoping that this uh, this Mandalorian build a pack has nothing to do with Mando. I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's more of a Mandalorian kind of like, or you know how we did, we've gotten Costco Reeves and um, Bo Katan so far. What if we get the guy Mandalorian? as like you know the build up pack and he comes with a few other accessories like best car and whatnot i think that'd be really cool uh maybe potentially what it would be or potentially a boba fett from the mandalorian i don't know that that just popped in my mind right now what if we got a boba fett and the reason it's a build up pack is because it comes with like you know i don't know separate armor pieces that you know you can take off or put on i don't know that just popped in my mind right now that's just a potential because he does have a lot of stuff that he can come with you know he can have like you know he can i don't know what do you guys think what do you think the new mandalorian build a pack is going to be you guys let me know down in the comments below but with that being said also gi joe snake eyes figures are still are back up for pre-order at target um i just i if i'm gonna guy if i'm gonna buy any of those figures it would have to be Scarlet and then maybe Snake Eyes and then Storm Shadow and Baroness. Uh, but I really did like Scarlet as a character and I feel like she was very, very underutilized as a character in the Snake Eyes movie. And which sucks because I wish, because I know that movie didn't do too well. So I highly doubt they're going to continue that timeline and everything. So she's probably not going to get another shot at being Scarlet. And uh, I think the actress did an amazing job. She really brought, you know, what Scarlet is to the character. So. Um, I was really excited to see her team up with the rest of the Joe team and see, you know, the dynamics between all that. Uh, and Snake Eyes, Snake Eyes as a character, you kind of just like are kind of glad that the movie didn't do too well because you kind of don't want that to be your Snake Eyes, in my opinion. Um, so anyways, if you guys are interested in those figures, they are back for up for pre-order 
on target.com and they are expected to come out October 1st. So that is all the toy news, but before we go down to part two of this video, I do want to say that Bad Batch did announce a season two. I know this has nothing to do with toys. Well, it does kind of in a way because probably means we're going to get more Star Wars toys in the future based off the Bad Batch series, especially season two. So what do you guys think? Are you guys excited for season two? Have you guys seen the second, the season finale? I'm probably going to go watch that right now as soon as I'm done uh, filming this because I haven't seen it yet. So uh, let me know down in the comments below what do you think about Bad Batch season two. So with that being said, guys, thank you so much for joining me for the toy news and the toy haul of the week. We're going to go ahead and move on to part two of this week's uh, toy news toy talk episode with our special co-host and we're going to talk some suicide squad and who knows what else we get into uh so with that being said guys i'll see you guys in the next part all right guys so welcome to part two of this week's toy news toy talk podcast and once again i have a special co-guest host with me where we are going to be talking in the suicide squad and once again i have with me my best friend chris brown hey what's up guys glad so, to be here today sorry I didn't mean no to you're good go you're good man you're good uh, I was going to say, first off, we're going to start with a non-spoiler review, and then we're going to move into spoilers, so I'll, we'll make sure it's clear before we go into spoiler territory, and I'll timestamp everything on the bottom in the description. So, first and foremost, non-spoiler, what was your thoughts on this movie? I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, Comparing it to the first one. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> the first one is, without a doubt, the worst superhero movie ever made. I don't care who's Although there, it is. there are some people that actually really like, like love it. Like if, they if don't you, just like it; they love that you movie. You know, if you do, like that's awesome. Like I, don't, I shouldn't tell someone. I'm not. I would never tell someone they shouldn't enjoy a movie because a movie is a movie. Yeah. Um, but I personally think it's terrible. I, it's like you, you'd have to pay me to watch it. But even honestly. still, I'd, I'd even be like, then, well, how much? I feel like, I I feel like how much? Even then, I feel like I wasted <laughs> my time because obviously it's not going to be a lot of money. So. Yeah, well, if you're asking someone to watch that movie, yeah. But, yeah, same here. In all, in all honesty, I wanted to hate this movie because that first one was so trash. And I was just thinking, like, well, how can this be any better? But I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a lot yeah. of fun. See? There was n there was only maybe one or two points where I kind of, like, got lost, kind of like you were mentioning earlier yeah. on, uh, where it kind of just slows down and whatnot. And I'm just kind of – it kind of pulled me out of it a bit. But for the most part, I was pretty much into it, and it was pretty nonstop for the most part. Yeah. So it was pretty great. And the way they handled the characters this time around and the storylines and everything was a lot better. Uh, you know, especially, like, I guess it just goes to show when you give a director the, the reins to do whatever they want in a rated R movie, you actually can see the characters from the comic books brought to life. Yeah, I feel like DC was trying to play too safe after the after the Josh Whedon Snyder or Josh Whedon Justice League, yeah. Because if you watch Birds of Prey, it's a very safe movie. I haven't. I personally haven't seen Birds of Prey. I haven't seen it either. Um, but think about it. If you watch the trailer when she's in the when she's doing all her action scenes, she hardly's ever killing anybody. Where here, when Harley's in an action scene, she's in a fucking action scene. She's actually yeah. like murdering people. She's doing stuff that. You would expect her to do from the comic books from the tv show from all these other properties because she's the joker's girlfriend so you know what i mean so like she actually looks like harley from the comics in this movie whereas in that's what turned me off from birds of prey the most part is is that it was it, it didn't look like a, a hardcore dc film it looked like it was trying to cater to a wider audience and it, that's just not what dc characters are in my opinion there's they're dark, they're gritty, they're violent, and when you go away from that, you kind of just turn off a lot of the original, you know, fans, you know? If I wanted something happy and joyful and go lucky, I'd go to a Marvel film, let's be honest. And, exactly. and, and DC needs to stop trying to copy Marvel. They're not Marvel, you know? They are a dark and gritty, more of a dark and gritty property franchise, and they need to stick with that and really, look, look at the Snyder Cut, look how much people love that. Yeah, exactly. And even this one, it had a dark and gritty tone because most of the humor in it was pretty fucking dark. Yeah. It was no, pretty it, dark it, humor. It you're kind of like laughing at the fucking way they died and stuff, and you're just like, uh, should I be laughing at this? Exactly. <laughs> you know? The first, of course, yeah. the I'm Literally, Warner Brothers, without spoiling it, um, basically went to James Gunn with a bunch of money. 
I said do whatever the fuck you want. He said you want to make a movie. And that's essentially the most you can say about it without, like, you know, trying to tell anyone any story details because yeah. that was literally someone who wanted to make a movie and they made it. And, man, that it, it was a silly movie for sure in a good way. But that's what I'm saying. Like but, the, was, but the majority of the humor was pretty dark. No, it was. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, even just from the opening scene, like, well, we'll talk about that more in depth in a bit, but just from the opening scene, all the humor you get from the opening scene is pretty fucking dark. Like, Imagine just Deadpool like, without the jokes, in a sense. Yeah, it's more like, like situational just, dark humor. It, like, in terms of just, like, overall, like, the way the movie's treated, just, like, gore, like, blood, you know, just total cussing, like, adult jokes. It's a radar movie. It's yeah. literally a radar movie that you should not take children Like, of course to. there was you know jokes in the movie but like you know what I mean but the Dead, majority, yeah. Deadpool's a, w- way out there in terms of jokes you know too many like, but um Deadpool uh, 1 was a good amount of jokes and they were good quality but Deadpool 2 is when it really downgraded yeah. to like middle school kind of humor like yeah. haha he he yeah no yeah none of the stuff I mean? like that in Suicide Squad um for sure um, it was it was a good movie um, so all in all before we get into spoilers what would you rate the movie did you enjoy it <sighs> I mean, I don't know if it was just because we just saw it and it's fresh off my mind, um, but I I think I would probably give this probably an 8 out of 10 right now. 8 out of 10, really? Yeah, only because it, it knew it was a crazy movie. Um, it didn't take itself too seriously. Okay, so let me ask you this. What were the flaws that you found in it? Obviously, since you were docking at two points, what are the the flaws that you can um, talk about without yeah, spoiling? Yeah, I almost anything? gave it like a seven, seven and a half, but can you, I, can I you give say it an eight, eight without for, spoiling anything? Um, it it did get a little disjointed at times. I feel like okay, I can yeah. agree with that. I um, can agree with that. I feel like some parts. It kind of loses you like, at some parts. Something's it happening, and then it's it kind of just, just like, like out of place, and you're and just, then just like, boom, like. Rewind, kind of. Oh, like, okay, okay, like, okay, I mean? okay. And okay. then and there's other parts too. Um, we'll go into that more on the spoiler, but. But okay, I get what you. It, it I get a little, exactly. It's a little, saying. little disjointed for me, and a little bit of parts that. Maybe it was just me, but they weren't as clear, to me until like the scene was kind of like already played out. Okay, but I get like, what I'm, you're saying. I don't saying. know if that was like intentional. But I feel like I don't know, like what. I'll go over it in spoilers, but it, it felt like it was kind of disjointed, a little disjointed, a, a little bit, like towards the middle of the, of the movie. It's a little disjointed, but the b- beginning and the whole movie's good, but it's just a couple parts in the middle. Okay, so all in all, you said eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. It knows what it is. Good action, good violence. It's funny when it needs to be. It. It's what you go to the movies for, and it, it, I would, definitely Blu-ray worthy. Really? Yeah, definitely. All right. Worthy. Well, hopefully we get the Blu-ray release since it's actually on uh, HBO Max. Probably, knowing nowadays, it's probably <laughs> gonna be next week. For all I know, right? Yeah, yeah, it's already on uh, HBO Max. We yeah, could already rewatch it right now. We yeah. can rewatch it while we're making Literally this video. Literally, pull the movie up right now. Could and watch, watch the movie in the movie. If I yeah, you technically could, and nobody would say anything. If I was bored inside the theater, I could have just skipped to the end on my phone. You really could have. been like, oh, look, this happens. Let's you just like showed everybody yeah. inside the theater. Like, hey, guys. Uh, <laughs> this is coming up. Stay tuned. Yeah, well, you see maybe. somebody Hey, you see somebody getting up from the, to go to the bathroom? You're just like, hey, hey, hey sit back yeah. down. Hey, you're hey, gonna, you're not going to want to miss you, this. They're about to win. They'll come <laughs> back. <laughs> oh, look at this part. Come on, man. This guy. Oh, man. <laughs> Dude, so many dude, I feel like people would like kill you. Someone would kill you. Like a hardcore if a hardcore yeah, family's in there. Depending on they who throw would, something at you at least. They yeah. throw something at you. Hopefully Suicide Squad doesn't draw like the hardcore fans. But even if it did, like you said, it's one, it's already been released in the UK and Europe, and two, yeah. it's on HBO Max immediately. It was on HBO Max yesterday. Last night. I went to go watch Game of Thrones and yeah. boom right there. It was like I ooh, saw a bunch me. of people. I saw a bunch of people like, talking boom, watch about Suicide it. Squad. Right there, and I was like, "Ooh!" I was like, it was Damn. tempting. It was tempting. Sit right there, 4K Dolby Atmos, and I was like, 
but we already had our tickets. It's like, yeah, all right, cool. I, I want to be surprised. Yeah. When I, went I really to the didn't theaters. know much about the movie to begin with, Same. and I was like, I'm not. I'm just. Gonna... I didn't watch any of the trailers. I just went uh, and kind I was of like, blind. I didn't want to see. I'll be honest. I didn't even. We're gonna see since it today this is anyway. a toy channel. I didn't even want the toys, guys. I did not want a single one of those toys. And now that I've watched the movie, unfortunately, I think I might spend the money if I find them in stores, especially just. Yeah. Polka Dot Man. Polka Dot Man really stole the show for me. Polka Dot Man was pretty cool. And I know it's weird to say. And, and Let's they, just they, go into spoilers. Well, then. hold on. Let me give yeah. my, my review real quick. So oh, yeah, I'm yeah, going to I'm gonna say honestly, and I'm going to hate to say this because I, I initially I wanted to hate this movie because of how bad the first one was. Same. Yeah. And the fact that I actually loved a lot of the uh, characters that they used in the first one. And I that the fact that they weren't returning in the second one. I was kind of like mad about the it. The ones that did. Oh no, never mind. Yeah, wait, 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 hold off on that. So I was kind of mad about that, and the fact that this movie is gonna be is technically a lot better than that. Well, not technically, but it is a lot better than that one. And it was even being touted as that. I was kind of mad, and I was kind of just like, whoa. I kind of want to hate this movie, but unfortunately, I have to give it a ten out of ten. Well, no, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta give it a nine out of ten. Okay, a nine out of ten. Yeah, no, because you brought up a good point about the pacing. You brought up a really good point about the pacing that I didn't think about until you brought it up. Yeah. And I, yeah. Now that I think about it, I have to give it a nine out of ten yeah. for that pacing. And that and that boom is not exaggerated. When it like when it gets disjointed, like oh boom. Yeah. It's like literally you're watching it and then. I mean, it all makes sense play. eventually, but it does in the context but like you said, of things. But like but you said, it, it does kind of throw yeah, you off it, while you're kinda, watching it. Kind of sometimes. Like, it, it picks up a little bit after those breaks, but, you know, it kind of, you know, throws you out a bit, and you're just like, oh, shit. You're like, all right. Yeah, so, I say 9 out of 10. Final answer, 9 out of 10. Nice. Definitely yeah. watch it in theaters. Even though it's on HBO Max, I highly recommend, if your theater has Dolby Vision, go watch yeah, it. Yeah, Dolby, even, Cin- I'm Dolby sure even, Cinema AMC was pretty... But, I, but I'm uh, sure wor- even in IMAX, it looks pretty dope. So, yeah, of either course. way, just go watch it in theaters yeah. on the big screen, loud speakers I highly recommend it it's better if, than watch and then if, you can go yeah. rewatch it at home if you already have HBO if your Max. Dolby Cinema Theater doesn't have recliner lazy boy chairs go see it in IMAX um, yeah, they're both awesome but if, cause you know I really wanted to see Dolby Cinema cause of the chairs yeah, yeah but that, on, if that didn't that wasn't there I, I would've probably went anyway yeah that, all in all it was a great movie so with that being said, guys, we are about to move on to spoiler territory, so we will give you a good 30 seconds to, uh, you know, go ahead and dip out. If you're going to dip out, you have until I open this beer, so <laughs> until then, guys, but and of course I do it wrong, so you guys have a little bit more time. All right, guys, so we have fresh beers, and we're ready to jump into spoilers, so you have a lot to talk about, it seems, about these this movie, yeah, so uh, go ahead, and why don't you go ahead and start, and I we'll do. go from there. Uh, I kind of... I didn't know really a lot about this movie at all, really, besides, like, the main trailer. Um, but it played out in a way where I I knew it was going to play into, um, where it didn't care in the beginning of the movie who died. Didn't give a shit. Who yeah, died. yeah, that was evident um, from literally like, the all start. The characters in the main trailers, all, all the characters. I like how he started to, like, make you feel like this is the main character. This is one of the main characters yeah, you're going to stick with. Yeah, and done. Yeah, like, uh, literally, literally every, all the characters, um, at least in the trailer, I remember seeing a long time ago. It was um, literally the Deadpool those, scene on steroids. Yeah, literally, I was. It was X we Force. It was X Force team on steroids we in terms were of their deaths. Literally saying, imagine if it's like Deadpool two. Yeah, where the X Force where dies. they all just fucking die as yeah. soon as the mission starts. It's. Uh, it, it was it, honestly, it, in my opinion, it, it was the best outcome because. I hated the majority of the people that were on that team. That's one that's one of the reasons yeah. why I said I wanted to hate the team or the movie was because I really did not like a lot of those people. Like especially like Pete Davidson, I was like, why the fuck? Yeah. I, if you're ever the, okay, but that is the perfect thing to cast Pete Davidson in. If you ever need to like, shoot an actor in the face, cast Pete <laughs> Davidson. Yeah. I you know, I, I don't mean in real life, but if you have to give someone up in a movie, Pete Davidson. Yeah. You know, I knew he wasn't cuz just just for the sole fact that I know he's done like a movie, um, and he might have done more, but I know for a fact that he wouldn't be a pivotal just, character in Suicide just... Squad. And so I would think I was telling you the other day, or even shit, might have been even before the movie. I was like, he's definitely 
one of the disposable characters. Yeah. For sure. Like, he's definitely going to be one of the one. He technically dies tw- second, in, right? In the, in the group. I think so. Because Weasel dies first when he drowns in the water. Oh, yeah. And then or they get technically him, he doesn't And then die. they get on the... Oh, yeah. So technically After he's the, the first one to die because he's like, I, guys, I'm the one that called you. Yeah. Um, so technically... He's Pete, like, hey, So hey, technically hey, Pete then, is the first one that dies because... shot right in the head. Let's talk about the gruesome factor in this movie, dude. Yeah, the, the movie this movie is does pretty, not hold back one. This movie bit. is pretty gory. Uh, even even me and you growing, I don't know about you, but like we grew up in you know the Mortal Kombat fatality everything. Yeah, especially, it was Mortal. You know, our friends back in high school knew all those cheat codes and everything. They that's the whole reason we would just turn it on just to do the cheat code and show yeah. us everything. So Over yeah, I'm sure even you, I mean you probably knew all the cheat codes and everything. It, yeah, no, they're like the um, the fatality. Combo, that's what I'm yeah. saying. But even growing up with that, I don't know about you, but there was parts where I was like, this is pretty fucking much. I was like, yeah, was I, I might horror. need to, I might need to look away, and and I like horror films. I like slasher horror films. It was definitely over exaggerated gore. If if anyone, like, I, if anyone, and I, I know a lot of people, it it was kind of like Quentin Tarantino style gore, where it was like over exaggerated. Like if someone but got shot. Fit. Yeah, that's fit. what I'm saying. It, it, was per, it was perfect. When someone got shot, but that's why I'm blood saying, would mo- explode. That's what I'm saying. The everywhere. majority of it was like dark-ass humor. Or, yeah. And if and you were torn it, apart, you're literally exploded like like a gusher. Just And there's like a bolt of lightning behind you, and you look, look like a badass. Oh, uh, so. yeah, with the shark. King yeah, shark. King Shark, yeah. He was, he's exactly what I thought. He was going to be King Shark. Um, Just from seeing him talk from like the trailer, the trailer. I knew exactly what he was going to be. Especially... I didn't Sylvester Stallone. I knew he was like, oh, he's, he's uh, Groot Shark. He's, yeah, he, like, essentially, yeah. You know, well, he's, yeah. You know, he's only gonna know a couple of phrases and sentences. Or At least whatever. he knows more than fucking Groot, and, though. All he says, you know, he's gonna be, dude. I mean, that's gotta be the biggest scam to get paid all the money that Vin Diesel gets paid to say I am Groot. That has to be the biggest scam. Like, I mean, Sylvester probably fought for for like something to say so that he doesn't have to say all those lines. Yeah, he's like, well. You know, Groot doesn't say all this. It's funny because I saw um, a video on YouTube where it was the press tour for Suicide Squad and Sylvester Stallone was there. Mm -hmm. And I was like thinking to myself, like, how much... I'm not saying maybe it was... Okay, like, it it had to have been not too hard. But, like... I, mean, I was it literally one, sounded like I was it. It one, literally no, sounded it did. like Stallone, You can tell so. it's him, but I was just funny. It was just funny. I could just imagine him in a studio somewhere completely different. And then just saying a couple lines Wait, here and who there. who plays Groot? Uh, Vin Diesel. Exactly. And it doesn't even sound like Vin Diesel. Or and, here, um, it literally Bradley sounds... Bradley Cooper's Rocket Raccoon, and you don't honestly never even see him at any... He, yeah, that's true. He acts like he is a Rocket Raccoon, really. He dude, kinda, he's so fucking rich, he doesn't Yeah, he too. doesn't he, even He's care, like, dude, like, I do this for fucking fun. Yeah. He doesn't even do the motion capture. Uh, the guy that plays Weasel, James Gunn's brother, does yeah, motion capture. Yeah, I say, capture. he just literally does the voice. Like, um, you know, he's like, was just the voice. And then That's what I'm boy, saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. He's, he's so good. really good. He's so but... rich, he literally does this for fun. Yeah, is he ever at the premieres? Because he's know. in a lot. Guardians know. 1 and 2, he's in... Endgame, Avengers Infinity, Infinity War. War, Endgame, and he's... He, he talks the whole time. He's just, he, dude. He just grabs cash and walks away and goes yeah, home and he's, lives his life for real. He's just dude, like, you honestly, don't need to know. Honestly, have you even heard much about him? No, because he just takes his money and goes home and yeah. lives his life. Literally, just takes his money, load of cash. And yeah, out. Dude, he, it's he's fucking crazy. He's one of those people that are just so rich that he doesn't even care to be known as a as a superhero anymore. Yeah, he's Rocky Raccoon. That's fucking cool. But not just that, but, you know, he has so many other things. He has, you know, The Hangover, um, American Sniper. So, you know, he has a lot of... He did that, um... I know it's probably the most basic title, but... Oh, the the one with with the Lady Gaga, Gaga, the A Star is Born, right? Yeah. So, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. So, that's what I'm saying. He has so many, so many big movie roles... And titles under his belt that the I'm fact sure that he he's Rocket Raccoon. Oh, well, well, dude, he's probably invested in so many yeah. things. So like, that's what I'm saying. The fact Which that he's Rocket Raccoon, he probably just does it for fun and to collect that 
fat Marvel check. That would be sick to be Rocky Raccoon, dude. It'd be It'd sick be to be cool. any superhero in the Marvel Universe. For or real. Or DCEU at this point, because it's actually on the up and up. Dude, For I a while, I was like, I, I might not want to be on a there's, DC film. There's no reason why I couldn't be Groot. Here, don't okay? listen to this. Don't listen to this blasphemy. <laughs> I could literally say, I am Groot. In the microphone, deep voice. I am Groot. And then they can add it. Like, they, they can deep Marvel, it. that's my audition. Call them. <laughs> but, anyways, we feared off. But we should go back to Suicide Squad. Yeah. Um, But, in Suicide Squad... Okay, who was your... Favorite character in Suicide Squad, and um, why? And let me, why? Let me think. I'm tied between two, and I I didn't think I was gonna like either one. Oh man. Actually, I'm tied between between no. I'm tied between two that I like from the movie, but one that I knew for a fact that I was gonna like. Um. Okay. Who's Idris Elba's character again? Bloodsport. Bloodsport. I always want to call him Deadshot. Um, obviously he's one. He was a good character. No, but I'm saying your favorite oh, character. Oh, my favorite favorite? Yeah, I'm not saying uh, list them. I'm saying your, who was your absolute I, favorite? I, I don't know why I, I thought you said a couple. Um, shoot. I don't know who's yours. That's kind of hard. Well, let that's me, what I'm saying. I'm tied between, Noah. okay, so I'm tied between two. And, uh, and I'm honestly tied only for cosmetic reasons. So I'll be honest. Like for me, like. The, the outfit has to make make the hero like if the outfit looks fucking stupid I'm not gonna be into it yeah. so obviously saying that it's obviously Peacemaker and Polka Dot Man but saying that between the two, yeah, those two. Polka Dot Man had to be the better one Polka Dot Man was pretty fucking it's leave, weird to say and leave it up to James Gunn to make Polka Dot Man you know I heard I want him Polka, to say, Ma- Polka Dot Man's in the movie because I was reading um that because he literally looked up stupid DC characters. It was probably and between hey, it was pro- <laughs> hey, it was probably between three characters. I'll tell you the three characters it was between: Polka Dot Man, Kite Man, and the Condiment King. <laughs> I guarantee you, he had the choice. Oh, I guarantee you, when you looked up God. that search, those three were the villains that popped up, and he was like, "I know for a fact in his notebook, he has he all three written." He has. Oh, dude, yeah. Condiment King was probably right there. He was, it was neck and neck, and he was like, "How can I make the condiments a weapon versus Literally, how can I make the polka dots a it weapon?" It all look silly until he shoots it, and it's like acid, and they like fucking basically like polka dot man. Dude, it like, was. Polka dot oh man, my it's like god, all, it's like all silly and shit. Oh, polka Holy dot man. Holy shit, he could have. It's like it's like mustard melts, and, and he ketchup. People. Yeah, that could have actually come and help and like handy for some of their mission parts. Leave it up to James Gunn to to actually make, make me care polka about Polkadot Man. I mean, I want a polka dot action figure now. He's the guy who got us to like a tree That's and a true. talking raccoon. Well, I mean, the talking raccoon was a given because he, he, you know, people were always didn't think he's a you cute talking raccoon. You never know raccoon. though; it could just just come off as dumb sometime. Like not when, when you have Bradley. When Cooper you're mixing it, it in with live action like that, like I just it easily could have been come off as. Dumb, I, feel I feel like, like Groot is more of an accomplishment because it's literally a talking tree that literally says two or three words, I am Groot. Like that, I feel like that's more of an accomplishment. At least Rack, Rocky Raccoon has a, like a personality. He can form complete sentences. He can yeah. be a person. Regardless, they got people that he got people to be sad when you know a tree died. You know yeah, I mean? like, I'll give him that because I did really enjoy. Guardians one, Guardians two. I, I I still to this day I hate Guardians two. There's nothing, I like I like both Guardians. I hate Guardians, Guardians two. The dude, Guardians two to me is from definitely the opening. A step dude, down. I'm sorry, I will never get off this case, but oh, from the opening saying. when they follow Baby Groot dancing over them, getting down with a giant alien, I'd rather see him get down with a giant alien than. I understand. Like, that was such a money ploy. I, that was such a oh here's some Ewoks. But I I think that's exactly. <laughs> Knowing James Gunn, especially after watching Suicide Squad, I feel like that's exactly what he wanted to do. Like, oh yeah, we're gonna like, but know, it was like just, Baby but in my opinion, it was just. But regardless, look at this, look at this motherfucker. But dance. regardless, in my opinion, I think that was the wrong decision. I mean, if he was dancing around and they were like, you know, in the ship, I feel like you know what sucks about stuff like that is like. Most fans probably didn't like it. Like at least people who was well, listen, like, I can like, make it better. So the general audience, oh, they loved it. Eats that shit up. That's oh, what loved, makes. That's it why look. they did it. Guardians look, two look, made look. like a billion. But I look, think. this is how it could have been better. They got down with the giant alien that we saw the action, 
And then they go back to the ship and they're like cleaning shit off of them. They're like, what the fuck? And all this. And Wait, which, which are we Guardians 2. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like when they when Groot's dancing around. So they get down with the giant alien and they blow it up. Yeah. And let's say they get covered in shit and then all of a sudden they're on the ship and they're like cleaning themselves off. And then that's when baby Groot's dancing. Like that would be, like I would have accepted that. That would have been like, okay, that's fine. But the fact that they, they, they chose to show like, a baby Groot. Or maybe no. like they show the fight and then when they're done fighting... And everything, they turn around and like it's just like baby group, just like yeah. See, like that's totally acceptable. I would have been, but the fact that they chose to literally just focus on him yeah. while they're getting down, and then Gamora's all like fighting, and she's like, "Hi, Gru." It's like, yeah. she's I can like, see what how the you fuck don't are like you it. doing? Um, I would obviously, but then also the just the fight, but, but it doesn't. But, but not just that, but also the full storyline. I feel like the most of the storyline is just talking. Uh, it, they're they're just talking. It, Ego's just fucking talking. It, I would it, say the movie. His name a, fits him. He's just talking about himself the whole movie. The movie is a little too long. I would say maybe. But just the fact that Ego just like talks about himself the whole entire movie, it makes sense. His name's Ego. His name's Ego. Yeah. Well, I know that, but it's just, but it's just like. No, I get it. I mean, if it yeah, Guardians I it. one was so full of action, and Guardians two was like, here's some action. Here's some long Guardians is, dialogue. Guardians one is so good. Guardians I, two felt like Phantom Menace, Guardians, but without the appeal and nostalgia of Phantom Phantom Menace. Like so now, good. watching back Phantom Menace is actually a really brilliant film, but I cannot rewatch Guardians two and say that yeah. same thing. Guardians two, I like, but it's I have it on Blu-ray, but I have both of them. But it's definitely not as good as the first one. Guardians one is definitely my top. It's not the top, but. It's definitely my top list of best MCU movies. That shit is fucking hilarious. Wait, Guardians 1 or 2? Guardians 1. Okay, Guardians 1. And that, that shit is a good movie, which is going back to James Gunn and, like, just feels to show why Suicide Squad was so freaking good. Because this dude obviously knows how to make team fucking movies. team, team up movies, movies that are just nonsense, like, make it funny and make you also kind of care a little bit and then also like not care at the same time like yeah. you know what I mean it's like he did, makes them did like, you get like a Game of Thrones vibe towards like the middle of it where you're just like anybody can die yeah like literally it, like just anyone at any point I feel like could have died at one point I thought um what was his name Bloodshot you said yeah no Bloodsport Bloodsport my bad um you combine yeah, Bloodsport to, and Deathshot yeah goes to show how much uh, I know about the Suicide Squad. <laughs> He's more of a Marvel guy. I'm yeah. more of a DC guy. But even, like, you know, I I just, you know, they're so similar. That's what it is for me. Like, I, I totally get confused. But but they kind of weren't because he was, like, pulling shit off his armor Just in and terms everything. of, like, like he if you were to just take a photo of both of them geared up, you would think, like, oh, those. That's, that's true. That's just a. A different like a reboot re re or, redesign. Yeah, like it makes sense because blood sports or yeah, blood sports uh, uniform is kind of similar to dead shots and everything. He does have like gauntlets and everything. Even the helmet is pretty reminiscent. It yeah. just doesn't have like the single eye on it, but it, you know it is pretty reminiscent. The movie was a little artsy fartsy too. Um, Suicide Squad. Yeah, especially yeah. the Harley scene the when Harley she's like shooting where, and all of a sudden flowers are popping up just for no reason at all. I mean, flowers. I don't care. But there's no reason at all. Um, instead of blood, just flowers. Um, it's just, it, it's no. flowers. And in the that her, might have been uh, a studio thing where they were like, "Well, you put in a little too much blood splatter," and he I was think, like, "I got you." I think the I think the opposite. I think it was the James Gunn thing. Okay. Um, it would, it was just nonsense. I think it was just adding to, just because. I think it was there because, he, he probably liked it. You you know what I mean? He was probably like, "Oh, like maybe this is what Harley sees." Yeah, that's to him. potential. Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. she doesn't see... Obviously, she's murdering. That makes sense. Like, a room full of people. It's her POV. It's her point of view. Yeah, you, so you she get, just sees flowers she and sees cool, about, colorful yeah, that shit. Makes, that makes sense because she's, like, crazy and stuff. And when the scene's over... Your girlfriend's crazy. Yeah, ex yeah exactly. He's probably, like, it's good. Better. He's probably thinking, like, good. <laughs> yeah. But, and then the scene's over, and then, you know, then it shows everyone's literally freaking mutilated... Hey, but, Dead. But, but let's talk about the fact that James Gunn made a fucking starfish a fucking okay but okay to be honest Star Starro has always been a pretty strong I, villain I don't know anything about Starro like the fact that okay here, that's okay. a thing 
is here's like a fun crazy fact. To okay, me, then which here's. I think it's cool. I think. It's okay, cool. well, here's a fun fact for you. Starro is the first supervillain that the Justice League came together to fight against. Huh. So the first comic book with the Justice League, they're fighting Starro. Mm. And James Gunn is a real comic book freak, and so yeah. he's he's you know he's a big fan of Starro. And yeah. and honestly, like you saw, he is a pretty formidable foe. He takes over you know anybody he wants, kind of yeah. like a symbiote. And so it it it's pretty crazy. Although I have to admit, I'm not crazy at about how they killed him with with the rats and everything. Like I much would have rather them like yeah, um, filled I him mean, full of explosives. If you're gonna give me the choice, definitely would have not chosen that. But I'm okay with it. Here's a, probably a controversial. Just... Here's probably a controversial thing, but I think. I think Peacemaker and the Rat Catcher should have died. Like, not Peacemaker shooting her, but all of a sudden, like the building just collapsed on both. Yeah, I'm like that way. It's just even playing field. Like it just happened to be chance. I thought if anyone out of that last core group of people thought Rat Catcher was gonna die, but you know she ends up saving the day actually. But that's what I'm saying. Harley, uh, I literally thought. The, because the way things were going up to that point, I literally thought it was going to come up to chance where the building was just going to go. I, two females saved the day, and they didn't make a big deal about it. They really did, and it kind of just fit into it. It was just, For me, it was just odd that, the, that there were that many rats. I mean, I understand maybe New York has that many rats. No offense to anybody that lives in New York, but, I mean, let's be honest. It's full of rats. Um, yeah. But... There's so many rats. Uh, do you think there's that many rats on a cert- on an island? I mean, it is an island, so maybe like if they were coming from the sewers, but I mean, but the fact that I don't think I don't know be... what every time they showed a map of Corto Mal- Maltese, it looked like such a small island that I don't think that there could be that many. I rats. don't think there there was definitely... mi- li- there was literally millions of rats to attack. I don't Starro. think there could have been that many, maybe, but the yeah. I don't think there could have been that many, but of course, at the end, it's it, it at, comes, at that point, it's just nitpicking. It's yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like you're already. I, I watching okay. a movie about. I would have bought it more. Okay, look here, 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 here. I I'll compromise. I would have bought it more had they filled him with explosives and had some a bunch of rats attack him. So it wasn't like so many rats, but it was a bunch of rats. Yeah. But they also had the help of some explosives. Yeah. I feel like that would have made it a little better. Like it would have at least seem more of like teamwork because it seemed like at the end it was all the rat catcher that helped where I feel like if they would have filled him with explosives and the rats would have come, it would have been more of a team effort and it would have been like, okay, they came united and defeated Starro. I mean, they did in a yeah. way because Harley comes and stabs him in the eye. I was going to say, Harley really saves the day, but it's But what if Harley came her. and stabbed, the rats came up, and, like, Bloodsport found a way to, like... Remember how when Starro was walking, he had, like, slits in his in his arms and everything? Yeah. Like, what if Bloodsport found a way to, like, get explosives in those slits and it, like, exploded yeah. while the rats were trying to eat it alive? Yeah. So it was, like, Bloodsport did something, Harley did something, and the rat catcher did something i was gonna say the rat king but that's ninja turtles guys no, rat catcher 2 rat yeah. catcher 2 but yeah, no because like the, no because in the ninja turtles it. there's a person called the rat king so uh, i was about okay. to say the rat king but it was the rat catcher um i probably did say the rat king a few times back previously while we were talking i don't know yeah. but um i feel like that would have been better but regardless i just for me it was just like there were so many rats like it wasn't even the fact that it was the rat catcher that did it. it was just so many that there's that many rats on an island yeah, for me that's that's what I'm saying. Like if little, if it was like a combination of little, rats, explosives, many, and Harley, yeah. if it was a combination of all three of them, then I would have been like, all right, I believe it. But the fact that there were that many rats, like there's that many fucking rats on an island. Yeah, I think. <sighs> Let me see. I think my favorite character might have been. Oh, we're back to that. <laughs> yeah, because I was just All right, guys, we bad. rounded back to yeah, his favorite my, characters. My bad. I don't know, it was just super random, but I was like just thinking about the cast overall. And I know it's terrible for what, what I'm about to say, too, because what, what was his name, Bloodsport? Yeah. I think he would probably, I think he might have been my, my favorite character of the squad. Really? Yeah, next to possibly, uh, it's, it, it's hard uh, for me. I would say my top... Okay, I'll give you my top three. Okay. Um, Bloodsport, um, Peacemaker, and 
It's between it's between Polka Dot Man and Harley because you know she has a lot of screen time. And she she, she is, does good at the yeah. character. So that's what I'm saying. Like I thoroughly enjoyed her action scenes. Like she fucks shit up. Um, she fucks shit up in some of those scenes. She comparing was, her in this to the 2016 Suicide Squad, dude, so different. And the stakes are... The type of movie it is is just so different. Night day. Night like, day. She hardly saves the day by killing a giant and starfish. By stabbing it in the one-eyed eye. One-eyed starfish in the first one. It's just, you know, her with the baseball bat hitting... Like, you know, like the yeah. one with a zombie. It's just crazy. Like, That's true. The movies are so different. It's, it's incredible how... The lack of a studio interference can make a movie great. Yeah. Like, oh my God. Like, who is... I don't know if it was... I know a couple people at least have to be different, but... You, you think Sony would have fucking... Who was calling the shots back but then think about compared it, this, to right now and, do, uh, you and think Warner people, Brothers? You think studios would have learned from Sony, Sony's mistake in Spider-Man 3? Like, even... That's all I'm saying. No, Sony definitely did not learn their lesson after Spider-Man 3. If anything, they... I'm not saying Sony. I'm saying other oh, studios. Oh, they okay, should have yeah. seen that and been like, oh, well, maybe we shouldn't meddle so much. Oh, uh, if anything, Sony doubled down on that. Yeah. Because the Amazing Spider-Man... The Amazing Spider-Man franchise, I know we're going off topic, but I know the, Ma- the Amazing Spider-Man franchise, I remember, had, like, movies lined up for that crap. Dude, The Amazing like, Spider-Man 2 is literally just... Like, should be called The Amazing Spider-Man 2, the no, setup movie. I could be so wrong... You know, and I know everyone's gonna fact check, but I swear they were they had like freaking plans for like three or four of those movies. Yeah, um, and then plus and then plus us plus us, uh Sinister Six. Yeah, like Sinister Six was like a separate movie. Like I, see, I would say Sinister Six plus a Spider Man movie well, with a Sinister Six. Oh shit! Like you know what I mean? So it's like so it'd been like a whole movie of them trying to get the Sinister Six together, and then like at the end he's like, "We're gonna go after Spider Man." I. Must have I per I still like Andrew that's, Garfield. That's lens. still a good idea though for a movie. Like I would really when I go watch. Home, I might even pop. Would in. you watch a? Oh hold on hold on hold on hold on. That's a really good idea for a movie. Would you watch a Sinister Six movie that doesn't really deal with that doesn't have Spider Man but deals with Spider Man? So like the leader's putting the team together because he wants to attack Spider Man. Think about it. I think that would be a really good... Like, just like but you have in Sinister Six without Spider-Man? Yeah, but like, you have to follow it up, obviously, with the Sinister Six Spider-Man movie. But what I'm saying is, think about it. The whole, It's kind of like Joker. It's kind of like Joaquin Phoenix's Joker, but the Sinister Six. So it's like the one of the, char- one of the main characters from the Sinister Six is trying to gather the team to attack Spider-Man. Maybe... Doc Ock and he and you know the whole movie's yeah. based around him trying to find these guys and he's like well we're, I want to attack Spider-Man let's go after Spider-Man and like the final scene like at the end he's like we're going after Spider-Man this is the plan right. and it just leads into a fucking Spider-Man Sinister Six movie you know what I think they should do that's not bad either I would take that too as well Hollywood yeah. hit me up you know what they should just do at this point I'm sure they might have something even cooler planned but screw it just do the Spider-Man PS4 uh, style where they already exist. They're already in jail. Like, you don't have... Like, well, I, I think that's where No nowhere Home, no Way Home's going to go because that, you know how they're pulling from different multiverses? Yeah. They're saying that since the multiverse is broken, Strange is putting all these different villains from this different Spider-Man because universes We know jail. for sure because the dude spilled the beans that... Oh, Alfred Molinas? He said his character... Is definitely in it. Comes from the moment he dies. Or... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it seems like they're they are kind of going that route where they already exist and they're in like a yeah. multi dimensional prison. So so he's not going to be old or anything. He's like he said they're going to be de aged. That's crazy. I wonder how that movie is real. I want obviously he's in. Where's it the fucking trailer? Like, that's dude. what I want to know. Where's you know the trailer? Why? Because they don't. They're not confident it's coming out in December. I pro- they're really yeah. they're weighing it the out the fact to that see Venom how bad... changed or took away the release date and just says coming in fall like that they're probably... checking to see how bad if maybe like how tight maybe Sony wants they change the rules on you know the COVID stuff going on but... Sony wants that money yeah so uh, which is understandable Spider- you don't release a Spider-Man movie when people can't show up to the theaters 
That's true. You know what I mean? Like, that's true. I know theaters are just opening, and I've been to the theater what three, maybe four times. I've only been twice now. In the past, like, two months from Fast and Furious till now. Yeah. Um. But most of the theaters were sold out in the ones I've been to. So it was kind of packed tonight, wasn't it? Yeah. It was. Yeah. By the time we bought our seats, um, they were kind of, you know. Being was, phased out. But to be honest, the the well, we, our seats weren't too bad. I felt no, like we, were, we had good seats still. I think it's just the I whole side. Just, yeah, the whole middle row, mo, the most whole middle the, section was taken. The, the middle. Section most of the was theater taken. was sold out. We just got a good, like semi, like off center middle seats. Yeah, but um, but it was sold. Most theaters showings I've been to have been nearly sold out. From Fast and Furious, Black Widow. Um, I think that's what I've seen. And Snake then, Eyes and then Suicide Squad. Yeah, Snake Eyes was that almost? I mean, if it was, that's people just wanted to go to the movie theater. <laughs> that I could agree with that. Yeah, um, but Suicide Squad. Yeah, that one was almost seemed like almost a sold out showing. I, mean, I wouldn't say sold out, but most of it was filled up. Our role was pretty filled out, I think. Yeah, if it I was pretty filled. You know, definitely everyone came out to see that one it was good well it was pretty the, hyped up yeah you got the, the thing it was pretty hyped i was up. actually pretty excited to see it um because i heard nothing but positive reviews and i was actually like okay you know movie has a lot of buzz especially when you have like not that i thought it was going to be bad but i just had zero expectations for it i'm like you know it's either going to be really good or super really good bad. or just like whatever yeah like i'm just gonna walk away just being like I watched a movie. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't terrible. It yeah. wasn't bad. It wasn't but good. <laughs> this one, you know, I actually walked out being like, oh, like, you know, that that was cool. Like, I'm going to, tomorrow, I'm going to watch it on HBO Max. Yeah. Like, I, yeah, I'm definitely going to watch it Like, tomorrow. I'm watching it tomorrow. Again. <laughs> um, one, isn't it crazy the fact that... Just to that clarify w- a couple things, you know, for second viewing, and two, because I want to see it. But isn't it crazy just the fact that we could actually watch it tomorrow? Like, or technically, we could watch it right, right now. Right? Like, what world do we live in where I just went and saw it in and Dolby we Cinema? And watch it right now. And tomorrow, like, yeah. Like, like we I said earlier in the in the, in the the show, you can literally pull I it up on your laptop up. right now and we can be watching. Yeah, in the movie, I could have just been bored and been like, hey, like... I don't like this part. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. Hey, screw it, dude. Let's just see the ending and get the hell out of here. Like, not that most... No one would do that, but yeah, because you paid, you know, all I that money for have, what? Yeah. Compared to what the theater experience has always been, I remember back then. Not that I'm old or anything, but I remember <laughs> it would take a long, freaking time for movies to come to DVD. Like I'm talking like seven months, dude. Depending on how popular it was, sometimes it'd be like a year or two. Like I'm not even kidding. Yeah, like some movies I remember would be like almost a year, like to come to DVD, and literally. I can. I think I can buy Fast and Furious Nine right now. Are you serious? Yeah, I think Fast and Furious Nine you could buy. Damn, and that crazy. movie came out like a month and a half ago. That's Unless, insane. Yeah, like crazy. Like the way since it's all digital, mm-hmm. obviously, it, it's crazy how quick. I wouldn't be surprised in like a month, in like the next three to four weeks, that Suicide Squad is available to purchase digitally, at least digitally. That's a possibility. In the next couple of weeks already. Because they just want the money. They just want as much money at this point as they can for that IP. Yeah. They don't care if you're going to go see it in the theaters at this point or buy it for $20 on iTunes. They want you to spend money on the movie itself That's at, true. at this point. So, like, why not? Like, it's on HBO Max. They either want your money on HBO Max to watch it. Or on a Blu-ray. Go in the theater to watch it. Or... You know, iTunes. Either way, you're going to give them at least 15 bucks. Out of all three options. Sounds like a fucking solid business plan in my <laughs> opinion. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, I would prefer the Blu-ray, but that might take actually...